Well, good morning. Welcome to this Wednesday Reflection. I'm here at the house uh, recording this on Monday in order to give um, time for transcription and just getting the email ready for you guys on Wednesday. So I'm here and getting ready to leave uh, for the next couple of days. Tonight, I'll spend time with pastors um, and just outside Giddings, Texas at Camp Tejas, uh, other pastors within the EFCA. Tonight's conversation and tomorrow morning's conversation is going to be about church planting options and, and just ministry and what does that look like for us to come alongside church planting op opportunities uh, and what God's doing there. And then tomorrow, we'll kick off the larger EFCA Texas Oklahoma Pastors Conference for the Healthy Church Clinic. And then so on Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be looking and hearing from other pastors on um, what does it look like as pastors to, to, walk, to, to guard our health? What does it look like to, to plan our schedule, to plan our sermons, to, to just do the things we need to do in healthy ways that are sustainable, um, that are God-honoring, and seek to care for our flock? So that's where I'll be the next couple of days. So when you see this, I will probably either be finishing up that um, thing, that, that time together on Wednesday, or on my way back in time for Wednesday night church. So uh, thank you for your prayers. I encourage you and invite you to pray for Andy, Samuel, and myself as we head out today and tomorrow uh, to spend time with other pastors from the region. And we're looking forward to that. So, well, as you know, this last weekend, we wrapped up our series in First and Second Peter, and it has been such a good series. Um, I think I didn't expect it to take five months. And, and what I love about it is I've walked away and I want to get back into First and Second Peter. There's just so much here that I know that, um, that we talked about, but we didn't fully talk about or other things we could have engaged with. It's just such a rich two books. And as I mentioned this weekend, to read through both these letters is like 25 minutes long or something if you're going to read through them out loud. And so just how incredible uh, the biblical authors were um, in being careful with their words and packing so much truth in uh, to sh such a short sort of span of time. I don't know if you remember these books. We gave them out back in April um, for about 75 of you who picked them up um, to just kind of follow along. And so um, maybe yours looks a bit like mine. Uh, let's see if I can flip through correctly. It's kind of inside. So yeah, maybe yours looks like a bit like mine. It's, it's notes from the sermon. It's markings on the, the page. And it was a joy this last week to just spend some time sitting and looking back through this. And so I actually took a highlighter and, and just said, okay, Lord, now the last five months, what are some of the things that you taught me and challenged me with? And so I highlighted sections um, as I went back through it. So on this Wednesday Reflection, I want to encourage you to spend some time looking back through the last five months of this series, uh, whether it's in uh, the, the ESV journal, if you picked up one through your regular Bible, um, and just saying, God, what is it that you've taught me? What is it that I learned? What is it that you challenged me with? Um, now, not all of you have joined us for the whole thing. And so I just want to share a couple of things with you, a couple of highlights uh, with you. All right. So as you remember, part of Peter's heart in this was to remind us um, to remain faithful and to remind us of the truth. And so uh, at the beginning of chapter three in Second Peter three, Peter says this. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere way, up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. And he goes on. But really, Peter's heart in all this is to remind us of that which is true, to remind us of what the Old Testament has taught us, what the scriptures had taught them, and what Christ and his apostles were teaching, and what we now have as the New Testament. And so church, if you're not in those, get in those. And then church, if you've been in those for a long time, don't think that you've got it made. Be reminded of the truth and live in light of that truth. At the end of uh, the first letter, Peter writes this. He says, by Silvanus, that means I wrote this with the help of my brother Silvanus, a faithful brother as I regard him. I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. And indeed, as Peter has reminded us through both these letters, his heart has been to help us to stand firm. And we saw that a bit this last week. And at the end of chapter three, is Peter gave us this analogy of a ship being tossed by the storms. And you might remember this in verse 17, the second to last verse of the second letter, uh, chapter three. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, that there will be false teachers who will twist scripture, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. What I love, Peter has been reminding us of the truth of God's word, that we might stand secure in it that we would stand firm in the truth of God's grace and who Jesus Christ is and what God has done for us. And, and not only the life we've been called to live now, but the eternity that we have with him and that inheritance that is to come. So Peter has been reminding us of the truths of God's word, that we might stand firm and not lose our own stability. Church, that's the truth for us. 
We are not only a place that proclaims the truth of God's word, knowing that it changes other lives, but we proclaim the truth of God's word, knowing that it is the foundation, is the rock upon which we rest. And Jesus Christ, of course, is the cornerstone, that we stand on him as revealed in scripture, and he who taught all of scripture and knew it and affirmed it calls us to follow scripture faithfully. I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to share with you this morning, so I'm going to just flip through my notes real quick. Um, all right, so Peter is reminding us. Peter is calling us to stand firm because that's his heart, and that's my heart for you, that you would stand firm in the faith. And then Peter, lastly, both in the first letter and the second, continually points to the fact that these are the last days in the sense that Jesus will return one day. And all that we're going through, all the persecution, the challenges, all those will be gone. And so in 1 Peter 4, verse 7, he writes this, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And he goes on to say, use the gifts God's given you to love one another well. And then, of course, at the end of 2 Peter that we saw this last weekend, 2 Peter 3.11, he says, Since all these things will be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? Of course, Peter's told us that throughout both these letters, where to remain faithful to God, to his word, to Jesus Christ in the midst of a world that both in the church and outside the church is trying to, to knock us off our game, to, to make us unstable and uncertain of, of, of the truth of the grace of God through Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. And so church, let's be a church that stands firm as we remember and remind one another of the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ and the truth of the word of God. This week, as you go through it, I encourage you, look for opportunities to remind yourself your spouse, your kids, your friends, your coworkers, each other, your home team, your ministry team, your Bible study group. Let us remind one another of the truths of God's word. Let's not be distracted by the, the new and the novel chasing things, but let us remind each other to stand firm of the tr in the truth that has already been revealed in God's word and the truth that we already know, that we might stand firm and be stable till the very end. Church, I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, have a great weekend praying for the fall festival and our one church service this weekend. As I said before on Sunday, I am in tears. I'm not with you. Um, I love being with you guys so much. Um, and I'm really going to miss being with you this weekend. Um, so I look forward to hearing how it is. And I can't wait to be back with you in a week and a half. Uh, we're going to kick off a new series in Malachi uh, before the Christmas season. And I'm excited for us to do that together. All right. I love you, church. Hope you have a wonderful week. Hold fast to Christ. Hold fast to God's word, stand firm in it, and let us remind each other to hold fast to both those things, to Christ and to his word. God bless.